Hello and welcome to the week ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 12th of July 2019 and the time has just gone 12.02 British summer time. And we're looking ahead to next week which is Monday the 15th of July until Friday the 19th of July. Um, and we'll take a quick look at what kind of, we'll take a quick talk about the major events uh, of the week that has just ended. Um, so we had Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, speaking in Washington DC for uh, two days uh, this week. And the takeaway message is that the Federal Reserve have left the door open to cuts in interest rates. Um, traders are still divided over, this, over as to when the interest rates will come and how deep they will be. But Mr. Powell um, talked about how uh, well, there are certain tensions, uh, trade tensions have, have, uh, have made a few kind of cross, brought about a few cross currents. There is some, and there's some signs that the US economy is slowing down. He also pointed out that unemployment in the US is near a 50 year low. Uh, it's also worth mentioning the, 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 job, the earnings growth rate is nearly double that of the inflation rate. So things are looking pretty good for the American workforce, but there are still some uncertainties in there. And Mr. Powell has certainly alluded to the loosening of monetary policy from the Federal Reserve. So by and large, uh, we had a good run uh, for global stock markets. Uh, we're talking, looking at a few charts in a few minutes. Um, US-China trade talks resumed this week. Um, the usual scenario of um, US-China trade talks are closer to uh, closer to getting off the ground again. Um, the usual scenario whereby the relationship between US and China is still not great, but it hasn't gotten any worse. And um, the relationship between the two sides still needs, a, still needs a lot of work. But because you didn't really, you really hear any negative news out of it, uh, that has really led, led to, um, that has really brought about, that has kind of added to the overall positive sentiment. Uh, we did here have some have some trade numbers out of China this morning. Uh, Chinese import. This is the, the U.S. dollar quarter ones. Chinese imports declined by seven and a half percent. That was larger than expected. And Chinese import exports uh, declined by one point three percent. But that was actually better than expected. Uh, economists were expecting a decline of two percent. So a solid drop off, a strong drop off in imports suggests domestic demand in China is weak. But the fact that exports dipped, but not dipped dipped as badly as traders and economists had expected, would suggest there's, there's a, a slight decline in demand for Chinese goods. And that could be construed as proof that the, the, the trade standoff between the US and China um, is starting to take, uh, starting to take effect. Um, I'll t talk about a couple of the major events next week, and then I'll look at some charts. So speaking about China, and, uh, on Monday, we have a number of Chinese economic indicators out fixed asset investment, retail sales, and industrial production. This gives a flavor of what's going on uh, uh, domestically within the Chinese economy. Any signs of weakness could, 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 could be argued that President Trump's tariff war on China is winning. Uh, looking ahead, um, Monday through Thursday next week, we have a number of major U.S. banks, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, all have, um, have quarterly updates. On uh, Wednesday, here in the U.K., um, across, across Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we have the UK employment rate and uh, UK, UK unemployment average earnings and CPI. We on Wednesday we have Eurozone CPI and uh, Canadian CPI. Also Wednesday we have second quarter figures from eBay and Netflix. On Thursday we have Australian unemployment and on Friday and, and fr Thursday we have full year figures from Sports Direct. So I'm taking a look now at some of the uh, the major markets. On some of the major markets, uh, starting off with the FTSE 100. So the wider view, basically, throughout 2019, is that the FTSE 100 is in a solid upward trend. We can see here um, earlier that this month, the FTSE 100 did manage to hit a level not seen uh, since August of last year. So it's in clearly you know, the, the bullish trend continues. Although we have managed to kind of drift a bit lower this week, but seeing as buying on the dip has been a popular strategy by and large uh, for in 2019. We could see fresh buyers out of the fold should we move a bit lower. So, kind of 7,440 region this area here might act as, a, as an area of support. And so, could this region here in around 7,400, a big psychological number. And also, the 50 day moving average, this blue line here, which comes into play at 7,365. This area could provide um, support should we see a move to the downside. If the wider trend does manage to continue, we could be looking at heading up toward this area here in around 7,640. And a move beyond that could take us toward this area uh, in around 7,790. 
I'll be referencing the 50 moving average in, in the next couple of charts, but just to remind you, the FTSE 200 is comfortably above its 50-day uh, moving average. Take a look now at what's going on over in Germany. Similar situation whereby, broadly speaking, we had a major solid rally from late December 2018 until early July. Granted, we have managed to kind of have a, quite a few uh, downward uh, sessions um, in, uh, in, in July, but nonetheless, the kind of wider upper trend is still very much in play. If we do manage to kind of drift lower, uh, support could be found from in around this area here, we're not too far away from it, at uh, 12,300. Or possibly even this blue line, the 50 day moving average in at 12,187. So at the market, the wider upward trend does manage to continue. We could be looking at testing uh, this region here, 11 not seen since late July last year, so nearly a one, one year on, uh, at 12,887. Which again, a nice reminder that the, uh, the DAX is comfortably above its 50 day moving average. Take a look now at what's going on on the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 managed to, uh, apologies, that's the, uh, the, the Dow Jones, which I'll come back to in a second anyways. Uh, the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 managed to uh, print an all-time high this week and we are recording this video uh, over two hours in advance of the US Open, but it would look as if the, the, the S&P 500 is going to open around 3,006, which would be a, a record high for the market. So that gives you an indication of, 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 of what the sentiment is. It's clearly been bullish. It's been bullish uh, quite a bit, partially because, largely driven by the fact that um, the Federal Reserve left the, left the door open for interest rates being lowered. If we could look to kind of push on higher from here, seeing as we're on uncharted territory, we could be, you know, people might be looking up the kind of big numbers, 3,010, 20, 30, so on and so forth. Um, but if you do manage to kind of have a pullback, support could be found from this area here in around 2,960 or maybe between, say, 2,960 down to 950, this zone here, or perhaps even down to this, this, this line here in a 2,910. And once again, the, um, the S&P 500 is comfortably above its 50-day moving average, this blue line here, which acted as support um, in the middle of June. Keep And that, and that comes into play at 2,891. I'll take a look at the Dow Jones now just, um, in a second. Similar scenario, last night the Dow Jones closed above 27,000. Um, record close for the, for the Dow Jones. We're appearing as if the Dow Jones is, is uh, sizing up to be opening at, in around 27,165, which would be an all time an intraday high for the Dow. Once again, sentiment is, is clearly very strong and very positive. Um, if you can't kind of press on higher from here, traders might be looking out for 27,200, 300, and so on and so forth. If you do manage to kind of drift lower this area here in around the um, 2,600 and, sorry, apologies, 26,660, this area here, connect the support, or possibly even down to this, this zone, um, 26,500 down to 26,400. And why I've been, uh, been talking about the 50 day moving average so much is that they're all, the Dow, the S&P, the DAX, and the, and the FTSE 100 are all comfortably above their respective 50 day moving averages, and Dow theory tells us that the averages must confirm each other. So essentially, while they're all above their respective 50 moving averages, it makes it more likely that those indices are going to continue on in that direction. Obviously, there are no guarantees, but it just makes it more likely. I'll quickly take a look at the pound versus the US dollar, because we're going to have some important British uh, economic indicators coming out next week. So sterling dollar has been in a solid downward trend. Um, We've managed to kind of bounce off the lows, but in the last couple of days, the pound has only really, really gained ground because of the softness in the US dollar. And if the, if the sterling can't salvage a decent rally uh, on a week when the Federal Reserve are dropping hints about uh, interest rate cuts, what, you know that, that that really says it all. That that, that, really, that really gives indication of how how um, how lackluster sentiment in the pound days. So if you do manage to kind of press on lower from here, I take off the recent lows in at 124.40, that, that sort of area. We could be looking at heading back down towards <clears throat> we could 
You could be looking at heading back down towards this area here in at one spot 23.65. If you do get, get any, any bounce backs in the pound versus the US dollar, the 126 area could act as, as a as um, as resistance. We saw some consolidation around there. And if you manage to press on a bit higher there, the 128 area. And we'd really need to be kind of taking out 128 before we can be, be kind of begin to think that this downward trend that's been in play for a number of months has come to an end. Um, thank you for listening. That's all for me this week. Uh, any comments you want to make on this video, please feel free to leave a review on Quick Reviews. Thank you very much.